Hi, welcome to episode 330 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, and that's where this episode's show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop where I sell my uh, knit patterns and hand spun yarns. That's called The Corner of Knit and Tea. And um, I am on Ravelry at Fluffy K, though I am not using Ravelry as much these days. So hi, how are you? It is Monday, May 24th. I hope that you are having a lovely week. Um, I had a nice weekend. Sun Saturday was just sort of hanging out and napping and Sunday was chores and in between I got to watch some TV and I'm working on um, a book. I'm reading The Court of Thorn and Roses, which I know is not great literature, but it kind of sucked me in. It's just a good fantasy story to um, kind of concentrate on and I've been knitting a lot to it and spinning a lot to it. So um, that was kind of my weekend. Uh, I had a super productive week, um, which I will talk about when we get to the knits and spins. And I'm wondering how you're doing. The weather here has been overcast and rainy for um, more than 10 days now and we've got a few more days of that coming. So it's not super exciting outside, although it's not super cold. Um, it's, you know, 60s and 70s and it is our spring rains moving into warm weather. I do fear that we're gonna end up waking up to heat and humidity almost overnight and it's gonna be summer. So I hope that you're doing well. I don't have a lot of chit chat today. Um, I have on my list this week to get um, the Tour de Fleece team set up. We will be having a Corner of Knit and Tea Tour de Fleece team. Um, I will officially register it on Ravelry and set up a discussion thread on Ravelry. However, I know that some of you are not able to access that, so it will not be a Ravelry only event. Um, I do have a Facebook page for the Corner of Knit and Tea, and so my suggestion is that if we want to chat and share photos that that would be a great place to do that or I can start a group out of that um, and we can do that there and then we can also use Instagram and or Twitter and any prizes that I give out will be uh, drawn from all of those places um, so everybody will have a chance to chat and participate. Um, unfortunately, I guess you do have to be active on some form of social media for it to be kind of easy to participate, um, but it does not have to be Ravelry only this year. So um, I'm getting excited about that. I believe that starts June 26th and runs through around July 20th. Um, the Olympics will also be this summer. I probably will not do a team for that, um, but I will probably pick a an Olympic project to work on. Um, so if you'd like to join me in that, that can just be more of an informal knit along um, or crochet along or craft along, I should say. Um, that uh, Tour de Fleece obviously is organized around spinning, but for the Ravel in it, or I don't even want to say the Ravel in it games because I'm not going to do it with Ravelry. For the Olympics, um, what I am talking about, if you are not aware, is um, years and years and years ago, um, Stephanie Pearl McPhee, the yarn harlot, talked about um, sitting and watching the Olympics and making it an Olympic event as a knitter. Um, which is to pick a project that challenges you, that dares you to take your techniques farther and higher than you have gone before, and to try and complete something great during the time that you are watching the athletes. It was never meant to take away from the athletes, but it was meant to give us a little something fun to do. And of course, if you enjoy watching the Olympics, um, that is something you can do while watching. And I do end up watching some of the Olympics. Um, normally this would not be an Olympic year. The games were scheduled last year for 2020, but of course because of the pandemic they have been moved to this summer. Um, and so those will be starting, I believe, um, mid-July or late July, kind of around the time the Tour de Fleece is over. So if you're looking for kind of a fun event to quote participate in this summer um, that is not a spinning event, that would be, and you can certainly crochet um, or weave or spin or uh, just define your project. So um, that's what's going on there. So let's start with the podcast. Today I am drinking um, a tea that a, a viewer sent me. Um, a lovely viewer sent me a care package a while ago. This is Machu Picchu from Tea Source and um, it is a white tea with peach and calendula petals um, and it is delicious. I have had it before and today I'm drinking it in my tentacular mug which is a mug from a potter that I absolutely love. She is a member of both the pen and the knitting community um, and I absolutely love this mug. 
So let's get started. First things first, I did finish a huge object this past week, and unfortunately I do not have it to show you. Um, I did finish the Painting Honeycombs Afghan, or Blanket, by Stephen West. I was knitting that for Zen Yarn Garden in their super fine DK base with a main color of gray and then eight colors for the stripes. Um, if you check out my Instagram, you'll see a photo of it. Uh, by the time I blocked it and or wove in all the ends and blocked it, it was about the size of a double bed and it went off to the photographer this morning. So unfortunately it is packed and gone. She has a photo shoot coming up um, and we wanted to make sure not to miss it. So I decided not to hold the package any longer. So um, like I said, check out my Instagram feed if you want to see a photo of it. I'm sure I will share more photos of it with you when the official photos get taken um, because she is a master photographer and um, it will be beautiful. It is going to be a kit upcoming from Zen Yarn Garden and they'll probably do it um, as a knit along sometime in the fall. So um, if that interested you, it was a lot of work. It took me about two months and in some total it was about uh, 3,350 yards that I knit. So it was a lot, but it is a warm and cozy blanket. It is gorgeous. Um, it did hurt a little bit to send it away because I love working on it. Um, but honestly, um, working on sample knits is a little bit like um, being a, I don't want to say like being a foster parent, but you know, you, you take something into your home for a time, you love it, you work on it, you produce it, and then you send it where it needs to go at the end. Um, and, and that's okay too. <laughs> So um, that one is gone, which means I have a few other things on the needles to share with you this week. So first up, I am still working on the baby blanket um, for a friend of ours who is due um, in early June. So um, I am getting, I'm about halfway through, so I am progressing nicely and I do have this week and this weekend is a three day weekend in the United States. Uh, this upcoming weekend, it is Memorial Day weekend, which means we'll have three days off work. So I expect I will have lots of crafting time in there. I am using a pattern called Summer Sidewalk from 5410 Studios. Um, it was designed to be knit in a DK weight cotton for summer babies. Um, I am actually instead knitting it in um, Miss Babs Yowza, um, which is a superwash merino, and I am knitting that in the colorway Old Gold. Um, and here is the Miss Babs label, Yowza. Yowza, um, they are expensive skeins because they are basically double skeins. So um, the $48 is basically a double skein. It's eight ounces and 560 yards. Um, so you can get very far with only one or two of them. Um, I am using two, um, but that's, that's why the pricing is such as it is. And without further ado, I'll show you what I've got. So I am knitting this in the baby blanket size, so I cast on approximately what I thought would be appropriate. I'm not sure I went with her numbers. I think I went with my own numbers, um, but I am using her um, pattern as guidance. Her patterns are generally, um, and her, by her, I'm saying 5410 Studios. I know um, she lives in Kansas, so um, always think of her that way. Um, but uh, her, all of her patterns are um, kind of basic geometric, um, like textured knits that are just real simple. And so this one is just alternating stockinette and garter ridges. Um, and it's just creating some grooves kind of like the sidewalk. Um, and the reason this is called summer sidewalk is because um, it was a DK weight cotton version of a um, heavier weight uh, I want to say bulky actually version that she made in wool so um, but I'm choosing to knit this in superwash merino um, and as I said I'm about halfway done I expect it will grow a bit in blocking particularly in length because it's garter stitch um, I do actually kind of like garter stitch when it is squishy like this and unblocked however um, this, um, the reason that I selected the Superwash Merino and the reason that I will be washing and blocking this one is because, um, it is a baby blanket. It will get dirty. It will need to be washed. So, um, I am above all things practical. Um, and so while I might have opted not to block it for myself because I really, really like, um, the garter stitch just as it is, um, it will definitely be blocked. So it will definitely grow, um, quite a bit in lengthwise as the garter stitch stretches out a little bit. Um, actually I'm probably going to run it through the washer and the dryer. Um, normally I wouldn't necessarily advocate that except for the fact that that's the care that I am going to tell the parents it needs because, um, they have a brand new baby and they do not need hand wash only items. 
Um, so, and I do have a good feeling that um, the Miss Babs Yard will stand up to that. Um, I have used Diazza in other sweater projects for myself, and I do not normally put it in the dryer. I usually wash it and block it um, in the sink and then lay it out flat to dry. Um, but for baby, for baby items, it's a must, um, particularly if you have parents who are not, I guess mom technically is crafty, um, but I will not expect her to, you know, hand wash and, and lay flat to dry for this one. Anyway, so my hope is that I can crank through a bunch of this this week now that I am done with the West Knits. Um, I am pleased with my progress this past week. I don't remember exactly where I was when we talked last, but I have done um, at least some amount, um, and I really believe that I can get through this in the next couple weeks. And even if I miss baby being born by a little bit, it's not like um, the baby won't be able to use it for quite a bit of time to come. Um, and my plan is just to wash it and block it and wrap it up and then go over and drop it off on mom and dad's porch um, and not worry about it otherwise um, and uh, let them be for the time being. So that is what I'm working on. It's got a really big garter border and then like I said all those um, just a little bit of texture. This is a super easy knit. I do not have to concentrate. I do not have to count. I actually put um, stitch markers in where the borders are so that I just knit to the stitch marker and then I either knit or purl depending on what section of the pattern I'm on. Um, I also did some counting before I hit the halfway mark so that I can make the other half the same size as the first half. Um, and so I am ready to go on this and I have already um, dug into the second one. It kind of exploded. It got a little yarn barfy. Um, even though I wound it on my ball winder, a couple things got tangled. Um, anyway, so I'm partway through the second and I am really, really pleased with my progress and um, yeah, so I'm very excited about that. Also, I should note, Normally, when I knit with something like Miss Babs that's indie dyed, I would um, advise you to alternate skeins uh, in just because sometimes they're in slightly different parts of the dye bath and they may be slightly different colored. Um, in this case, I did not take my advice and so far I don't think it's a problem. However, I did alternate, so I didn't start at the beginning alternating skeins every two rows. I decided not to bother with that. However, in the transition section, so probably for eight or ten rows, well, I should say 10 or 20 rows because um, it was in the garter stitch. Um, I did go back and forth um, for, I, I would say probably eight garter ridges, so 16 rows. I did alternate between um, the two balls so that I would um, have at least kind of a fading transition if there needed to be one. And I don't see any difference. I suspect that these were dyed together because Miss Babs is pretty good about that. Um, like if you order a certain number, they'll try and send you well-matched skeins um, or skeins that came from the same dial. So that is that one. Um, my second project is, as I have talked to you about, socks. And I am knitting the Linnea Socks by Talvi Knits, who is Susanna Winter. It is a free pattern in beta testing over on her um, new network site. Um, and so I joined so that I could um, play with the pattern and be a part of her network site over there. She has about a thousand members now. Um, anyway, the socks are in beta testing in the sense that she is giving away the pattern for free if you want to test it and return feedback for her, feedback to her. When the pattern is complete, and I believe the beta testing pattern, the beta testing period might be over May 31st, then it will be a paid for pattern on her platforms, either Payhip or Ravelry. Um, and so right now she's just allowing us to test it and give her some feedback. Um, so I am working on this particular sock pattern in a new to me sock yarn. It is called Essence of Autumn Hand Dyed Yarn. I bought it from Eat Sleep Knit. Um, it is her pasture sock, which is 80% superwash BFL, 20% nylon in the colorway Black Cherry. Um, and I am working on this one sort of slowly but surely. I had hoped to have the first sock completed by the time I talked to you today, and I'm not there yet. But that said, I have made good progress. I finished the entire cuff. I did the slip stitch heel. Um, technically, I think I was supposed to do an IF partridge heel, and I did my normal slip stitch heel flap and gusset. I did follow her numbers for the heel flap and gusset, and now I am moving down towards the toe. I should say that I am loosely following the pattern because the pattern is actually written for uh, to be toe up. So I'm really not a very good beta testing knitter in this sense. 
<laughs> because I uh, reversed it to do top down, so technically the cables go in the wrong direction. It still creates roughly the same pattern, which is kind of a diamond shape. Um, the it just the uh, stitches that um, are cabled as part of it are going in the wrong direction. Um, and so she has it set up so that actually the pattern goes all the way down to the toe, which I will continue. Um, and so by next week, I will have a finished sock for you and hopefully we'll be partway through the second. Um, I'm going to try and make myself do two repeats a day of the, um, of the uh, diamond pattern so that I can uh, be sure to finish these hopefully maybe even by May 31st, um, but if not by um, the end of the first week in June. Um, the sock pulls in a little bit because of the cables and the um, pattern, so I went ahead and went a little bit bigger. I am using my US 2.25 millimeter needles. These are um, US, sorry, I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles. They are US ones, they are my signatures, and I decided to do the 60 inch sock. Now, normally I would not go that big, but like I said, because I I knew it would pull in a little bit because of the pattern. I decided to go ahead and um, do that. My uh, needles are not the right needles. I believe she had a one and a half as opposed to a one. Um, and then she had a few different pattern sizes. There are small, medium, and large. So technically I think I'm doing the medium on a slightly smaller needle um, and I made that and, and they fit they fit very nicely. I tried them on last night just to make sure that the heel um, and everything wouldn't be too tight. They are super snug, which means they'll loosen up a little bit as I wear them, but I am really looking forward to them. The yarn is beautiful. I think it's really nice for this pattern. I had hoped that the um, cabled stitches might stand out just a little bit more than they do, but I do think you can still see the pattern with it, even though it's a variegated yarn. So I am also double dipping these with the Eat Sleep Knit uh, second quarter project, which is um, a pair of socks. So I'm hoping to finish this by the, these need to be finished by the end of June, but I hope I will be finished far before then. Um, there's nothing like imaginary internet po points to um, keep you motivated. <laughs> So not as fast as I would like, but still doing okay. Um, hope to finish these in the next couple days and then start the second one. The third project that I have been working on is I pulled a project out of, I don't want to say purgatory because that's not exactly what happened. Um, you might remember back in January, I cast on for a shawl um, and then it ended up getting put to the side when all the samples came in. So I had a period of time um, in January and February where I kind of lost my knitting mojo a little bit and I also didn't have um, much in the way of samples to be knitting. So I cast on a bunch of things and kind of nothing held my interest. Um, and then I cast on some things that held my interest but they got shoved aside when new things came in like the West Knit sample blanket. Um, so the pattern that I am knitting is called My Chrysalis. It is a, um, it's technically an asymmetrical triangle with a little bit of brioche and some lace and it is designed by Lavanya Petrosella. And I said that I was knitting this shawl because I had two yarns that I had bought um, that I thought would go together perfectly. Um, the first is Treasure Goddess yarn. That's my friend Christine, Treasured Toes Socks. Treasured Toes sock yarn. It is 75% superwash um, merino wool and 25% nylon, 100 grams, 463 yards. The colorway is feeling fine with blackberry wine. And that is Christine's yarn. And the colorway is feeling fine with blackberry wine, which is a very dark um, blackberry color. The second um, contrasting yarn is Primrose Yarn Company in Plume, which is her 72% um, kid mohair, 28% silk base, approximately 450 yards in crazy right now. So this is Primrose Yarn Company, and this is the um, kid silk mohair. It is kind of a pale... Um, like parchment color and it's got lots of pink and then it actually does have a few you can see like right there has a few bits that are a little bit darker it's actually got some pink and some green and kind of a um mulberry like a petal pink um or like a peachy pink and then um some pale green and then um a little bit of like a darker purple it's really hard to see because it's a very it's a very pale color but i thought actually that the purple might pick up nicely the dark purple so i thought they would be a good contrasting color and as I said, the shawl is kind of an asymmetrical triangle and it's got sections of a little bit of lace and stripes and then it's got sections of brioche. So um, I can show you basically, actually that's backwards. I can only tell, well, okay. Technically that's not backwards, but I've decided it's going to be backwards. 
So technically, um, I should be, technically that should be the front side, but um, the issue is that I kind of carried my yarns up on this side, which um, I didn't realize that I was doing that on the incorrect side. So technically, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, my only complaint about carrying the yarns on this one is just that it's really easy to see them because of the fact that one is like a lace weight mohair and one is a fingering weight. But okay, here we go. This is technically supposed to be the right side. I think this is going to be my right side. Yeah, it doesn't matter. So you start at a point, you work in your stripes, and then you finish your first brioche section. And um, when I broke off and stopped because um, I had to pick up other things, I stopped at the finish of that brioche section. So in the last two nights, I have picked up and done another striping section with the lace, and now it's time to go back into the brioche section. So my hope is that I'll work on this a little bit this month. I do have more samples coming, and honestly, if this gets put back down, that's fine. It's a shawl for me or for someone else someday. Um, you may know that I am not a huge fan of mohair. I love the way it looks, and I don't even mind knitting it with my hands, but my neck is not so happy with it. Um, my neck actually prefers not to, although this is um, very, very soft. So I have not decided if I will be keeping this shawl or if this shawl will be a gift to someone else. Um, but uh, right now, it like I said, I bought the two skeins and I really, really wanted to use them together and um, in this particular project. And so uh, I cast it on back in the earlier months this year. And my hope is that I will um, finish it in the next couple months. There's no rush, um, but I would like to. So I decided to pick that back up rather than cast on anything new. Um, I do have a new sample here, but it's one that I can't show you for Knit Picks, and I suspect I will be working on um, a sweater soon for Zen Yarn Garden. And then, of course, as soon as the baby blanket is done, I have birthday sweaters for the kids. I'm going to be doing Sock Arms by Stephanie Lotvin, who is Telly Bean Knits, and so I will be working on those next as well. So it's going to be a busy summer. One of those sweaters might well be my Olympic project. We'll just have to see. So sip of tea and then let's get into the spins and then I will be done for the day. So two weeks ago I was spinning a um soup it's not super wash I was spinning a tarhi braid from Nitty and Color that I thought looked like Aurora Borealis. It was purples and indigos and violets and then some bright greens um, or bright teals and I finished that. Um, the camera will not pick it up because the camera does not do with these subtle um, blues and greens that well. But I have 340 yards of a squishy soft sport weight yarn in that color. Yeah, I the screen just doesn't do it justice, at least not what I'm seeing. Um, like I said, there is dark blue, there's like some indigo violet, there's some sky blue, and then there's little pops of teal in there, which I don't know that the camera is picking up at all. Um, it is really beautiful. By the time this is up, this one will be up in my shop and there will be photos on my Instagram if you would like to see or um, in my Etsy shop and the links to both Instagram and my Etsy shop are down below in the description box so you can check those out if you are interested in some squishy hand spun yarn. So um, this was a delightful spin. Like I said it is not super wash but it's still it would make super squishy socks if you don't mind a little bit of felting um, or it would make a great um, shawlette or some other kind of accessories. It's just really squishy and gorgeous and totally in my color range. So um, like I said, photos and it will be up in the Etsy shop. This week I went back to spinning some of my Hello Yarn clubs. I try and rotate a bunch of different dyers in and out because I love so many different dyers um, and I think that also makes it more interesting for you to watch. Um, this is Village Fet which is on Falkland. It was the Hello Yarn Club from March, so I trust I am not spoiling anything. Um, there is some rich kind of russet oranges and browns, a little bit of gold, some purple, and then kind of a gray in here. And this is two ounces of the fiber. I already have the other two ounces spun. I'm thinking I'm going to do this as a fractal spin, which means I stripped the fiber and spun um, 
thin strips on the first half and then I will spin it through in its entirety or in just two strips on the second half and that will create some um, subtle striping. But this will also be for the shop and her Falkland blend is not quite as soft as some of her merinos but it is pretty soft. Um, it's also incredibly easy to draft so if you are a newer spinner I would highly 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 recommend Falkland. I really like it. Um, it has the softness of um, like uh, not a super soft merino but it has the softness but it also is a little bit longer stapled and it drafts like butter so um yes so this is what I'm working on this week um I will probably after that have to take a short break from um spinning colorful braids because I have more chicken yarn for the next chicken collection the current chicken collection is going to launch this weekend I'm so excited I can't wait to see and I'm sure I will be sharing um parts of that on my Instagram. If you are not familiar with that, you can check out a few of the most recent previous episodes where I talk a little bit about my work for the City Girl Farm and creating um, artisanal chickens um, out of wool. So thank you for joining me. If this was your first time here, welcome. I hope you found a few things that were interesting and will come back again if you are a returning viewer. Thank you so much for joining me again today. Um, I love spending this time with you and following you online and seeing what you're up to and getting to share what I'm working on. I hope you have a lovely week ahead and I will say, as I always do, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next time. Bye!